Jive Hive Jeff from Two Hacks Garage. Well, as you can see, I have the tunnel ram here. Um, if you've looked at my previous videos, there's been a lot of cylinder head work, a lot of port matching, all that type of stuff going on just to try to get a little bit more power. Um, now, mind you, a lot of this advice has come from you, the viewers, people that have reached out to me, Kyle, Jimmy, everybody. And I've done quite a bit of research on this just to try to chase that little extra flow, maybe just a little bit of extra horsepower, torque, whatever, all that type of stuff really does add up. Every little bit that you do does make changes and hopefully end result will be more performance, more power, and just a whole lot more fun. Uh, mind you, I'm doing this on a budget, even though this isn't budget friendly, all the work I am doing to it, I am doing it to myself along with some friends and also along with Jimmy. So that part of it is actually on a budget instead of taking this to a machine shop and having them figure everything out of their own and then handing me a big bill for it. Uh, so where are we going next with this? Well, I already took care of the bottom part of the intakes, intake ports on this and kind of smoothed some stuff out in here. And the next part of it's gonna be the actual top of the plenum here. Um, this is gonna be for another video, but you see I have velocity stacks. Those are meant to kind of trap air and have one even dense charge. And I do have spacers here. And those are kind of meant to bring the carburetor up a little bit give that carburetor just a little bit of extra time, room to atomize to go down those runners. Um, that, like I said, that's gonna be for another video when we actually get into the carburation on this. This video is gonna take place of what happens after that fuel is pushed by the air through here, through the spacers into the plenum. So I'm gonna show you what we got going on here. Be right back. So as you can see, I already taken the carburetors off of this. And what I want you to look at is the spacers here. Now, mind you, when the carbs go down upon this spacer, the air does flow through here. If you can actually see along this area here and along this area here, if I remove this, this here is actually larger than this part here. So what I need to do is I'm going to take some of the factory hardware that I have here and I'm going to bolt these spacers into place just like that. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just bolt or I'm going to blend that surface together. Now, mind you, when I was at Jimmy's, I went ahead and used some of that Dicom blue and laid it out here and also in here. And the reason I did that is I hadn't set these down on there yet to determine if, if these were actually going to be over it or going to be a little bit smaller. So in our case, we are actually just a little bit smaller. Um, as you can see in here, it's actually, there's a good picture right there. That lip is actually over the actual plenum itself on the intake. So the first step we're gonna do with this intake is we are going to blend this actual spacer into the plenum itself. Now, the second part of what we're gonna do with this is we are going to, if you look down a little bit closer, inside of the plenum itself, see if I can get some light in there, I got more Dicom Blue in there. You can see along there and along there. We have it on both sides. I'll show you the other side too. If you look along there and throughout, we do have some Dicom Blue laid out already. In fact, I'll get a, a better picture of that for you. So as you can see here, Dicom Blue, Dicom Blue. And when I set this on here and align the holes, and now mind you, before I do this, I'll bolt this down and I'll scribe it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in to the actual chamber here past this plenum, and I'm gonna scribe out those lines. And I'm going to bowl blend the bottom half of the intake to the top half of the intake. The reason being is, is when the air and fuel are atomizing in there, those are rough edges that it's gonna hit and it's gonna wanna swirl in here and not actually get down into the runners itself. So, see if I can get a better lineup in there. With this, let me move my camera just slightly over and come down in here. Lighting isn't the greatest, but if you see here, you can see what I'm talking about. That blue line in there, that's on both sides of this intake. So in order for this thing to flow properly 
and kind of get the desired res results of the actual proper fuel atomization. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scribe everything out here with my plenum and we're going to grind that down. And it's pretty much going in and port matching the plenum to the bottom of the base. So the third step that I'm going to do with this, this is actually something that Andy Wood from Unity Motorsports sent me a video on. David Bizard has a really, 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 really good video on kind of modifying tonal rams and intake manifolds. I've also watched many other ones, but he actually goes in and puts little dimples in here with a drill bit. So you can see here that I've got just Harbor Freight Hercules brand quarter inch titanium impact rated drill bits. And what he does is he goes along each step here in these intake manifolds and puts little dimples. Now he's not drilling deep. It's literally just to the point where you get to about right there on the drill bit. And the theory behind that is, is, is when air and fuel get in here, sometimes it wants to puddle and run down and have raw fuel versus it actually being properly atomized. So what ends up happening is, is when it hits the dimples that I'm gonna put in here, it allows an area for the fuel to somewhat collect, and when air is being forced back down in here, it hits that and re-atomizes the fuel and pushes it back down in the intake runners. So that's actually a really good tip just to gain a little bit better efficiency with this and a little bit more power. And while I'm in there, what I'm going to do is, and this is from an Andy Wood video that I watched from Unity Motorsports, there's these little ridges in here on each side of this intake pretty much everywhere and i'm going to smooth that out just a little bit now mind you i am going to keep a rough surface for proper fuel atomization like in my previous videos you do not want this to be a you know glass smooth surface you still want it nice and gritty so when the air and the fuel hit that it atomizes properly so kind of recap step one is going to be taking care of the spacers to the top of the intake plenum this piece here and then we're going to take this piece here and we'll scribe it to the bottom of the base. We'll blend that in, AKA if you want to call it port matching. And then we're going to come in, we're going to radius this out a little bit, take a little bit of the ridge out of the actual chambers and the ports there. And then we're going to come in and we're going to drill those little holes. Um, the goal of this is, is just to maximize my flow to be able to get the proper fuel atomization and gain a little bit of torque and a little bit of power on the budget. Here's what I'm working with here. Quarter inch drill bits. Pretty common, pretty cheap. <clears throat> the same die grinder I used for my cylinder heads with that same burr bit right here. Nothing crazy, nothing expensive. If you have a good one, these will last a long time. Just a cheap little craftsman pointed style awl. That's gonna be for scribing and I'm working with a drill. This drill, Menard's brand, nothing crazy, nothing special. It's an actually impact one, and that's gonna be used to put those in there. So by doing this with a little bit of time, I'm gonna increase the flow on this, have better fuel atomization, and hopefully gain a little performance through torque, through horsepower, you name it. I'm just chasing every little detail I can before I put this engine together. So with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna to get to work. See you soon. Well, if you look closely in that video, it looked like I was absolutely grinding a lot. Well, it is because I was. So these spacers are kind of a universal style thing. And I told you I was going to come in here and, you know, get that matched up. What I didn't show you at the beginning was this. Flip this around. Look how much I've taken out of here. See if I can get a closer look in there. So you can see I've actually ground out quite a bit of metal in there. 
Now, if you look at the side that I haven't done, look at the obstruction in there. Let me get a close up. See if you can see that. You see all that obstruction up in those corners and on the side? That's no bueno. Um, while in some cases it might not matter much, but I'm going for every little bit of flow I can. So what's going to happen is, is when that carburetor opens up, it's going to want to start dumping that fuel into those individual runners. If this is in the way, it's going to want to try to force it down. And in some cases, what's going to end up happening is when that's forcing it down, it might end up having the effect that I was talking about with actually puddling, not hitting the intake runners correctly, and overall just wouldn't be efficient. So I do have a, quite a bit of, you know, going on here with that. And the other thing I did notice, I did test fit a carburetor real quick. And I do have the Holley style, if you want to call it Holley Quick Fuel Technologies, or 650 double pumpers. And these are for that series of carburetor. However, that being said, what I need to do is I need to radius this just a little bit, not a lot, because when I laid it down, that carburetor where the butterflies are, it's pretty close to that edge. So what I'm going to go in is I'm just going to roll this out a little bit here. So when those things open up, it has a nice smooth edge to kind of go along the sides here, hit where I've rolled it in, and go into those actual individual intake runners. It's a lot of work, yes, it's grinding, it's nasty, it's messy, but you know, honestly guys, who gives a shit? You got it apart, you go ahead and take care of it, make it as efficient as possible. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna continue working on that. And mind you, this does look pretty rough, which it is. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'll take the 120, to, uh, 120 grit flapper wheel and I'll clean all that up in there. And if you see these little gaps here, not to worry, there is gonna be a gasket in between these two, and I'll probably lay down a little bit of schmoo just to make sure it seals correctly. And if needed, I could always put just a, bit, a little bit of epoxy in there, grind that over, and it'd be all good. Uh, so with that, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get back to work, but as you can see, there is quite a bit of difference. So remember that when adding spacers, remember that when buying these tunnel rams. Um, yes, it's kind of one size fits all, but just like when you buy shoes, and the little soles that go in them, you got to trim them. Here you go, guys. Let's get back to work. See you in a few. So that's a wrap, kind of recap what we did on this. Um, I did explain a little bit on working these spacers to the upper plenum of this intake manifold. And the reason I did that is as you saw underneath here, um, that it was actually much, much smaller than the actual upper plenum of the port. So just a little bit of a recap. We went in here, we radius this out so it actually matches within here on, onto the upper plenum. Um, rolls right in we rolled the edges for a little bit more flow and that was pretty much that part so basically we if you want to call it gasket matched port matched the spacer to the upper intake plenum that's what we did on the top of that now what we ended up doing on the actual lower intake part of this um, one of the first things that we did is you saw in the video we went in here 
and with the dicum blue, I scribed that out. And then I went in and I slowly rolled these edges back. And then I started working really, really carefully in here and getting these lips opened up. The sand castings in these things were it's kind of subpar. And I just smoothed that out so it's a nice, smooth run down into each port. Um, you have to be kind of careful with these intakes. They are thin. You don't want to take too much off at a time to actually break through. Uh, the next step on that, there was all these little like nubs, gnarls, whatever you want to call them in these parts all the way across. I went ahead and ground those out so everything is now even in here. So when the air fuel mixture hits in there, it's not obstructed by that. It doesn't want to run as a liquid fuel. It wants to stay atomized. So I went ahead and took care of that. And then same thing with here, guys. Um, these ridges here were pretty rough on there. And I just smoothed that out. We went in with 120 grit flapper wheel, cleaned up everything just like we did on the upper intake plenum, just to keep it rough for proper fuel atomization. Now, as I pointed out, I did drill these little holes in here, and that is just to help when the charge goes into the intake, any fuel that wants to, if you want to say, deatomize and run down, well, this is going to trap that fuel. It's a great little tip I watched in a David Bizarre video that Andy Wood uh, sent me, and I said, you know what, give it a shot. We got it apart. Let's go ahead and try it. So the theory behind that is it'll fuel, it'll pool in there in those little holes, air will hit it, burst it back up, the carburetor will shove it back down and it re the fuel. So, yeah, I'm kind of happy with this. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but you know what we did do is we gasket matched, port matched, whatever you want to call it, the spacers to the upper intake plenum. We got all that radius out for better flow, more even flow, and kind of match it where the carburetor sits. And then we did the same thing on the bottom here and just cleaned up the casting flaws, rolled that out, opened it up, and put what I'm going to refer to as David Bizarre's little secret. Um, I really do think this is going to work. I did a lot of research on it, and it does make a lot of sense. And seeing the guy has been doing this for a very, very long time, longer than I've been alive, you know what? I'm going to take his word for it. So I hope you learned a little bit something tonight. If not, I'm glad you know it. A lot of work, many hours on this. I was just taking my time, being careful. Some of this is new to me. And you know what? I had a lot of fun doing it. And yeah, as you can see, it does actually look pretty good. In fact, what I'm going to do real quick before I end this video, I know it's a longer video and they have been getting a little longer but I have been getting into a little bit more detailed work. I'm gonna set this on top and just line it up to where the holes need to be. And what I want to do is I want to show you down in there how this actually matches up. So yeah, as you can see, it's opened up quite a bit and those casting flaws that created those obstructions, yeah, they're gone too. So you know what, guys? Better flow, better efficiency, more power. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.